Céline Le Bourdet is the Canada Research Chair in Social Statistics and Family Change and Chair of the Department of Sociology at McGill University. She's a specialist in quantitative longitudinal analysis applied to the study of families. Her research has examined the profound demographic changes that have taken place in Quebec and Canada over the last 40 years. Céline Le Bourdet is a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. Well, interestingly, is uh, my dissertation, my PhD dissertation, had nothing to do with family. But I did uh, a study that was an income determination, and mostly what I ended up at the end of the day was after, you know, controlling for social classes, skills, experience, whatever, there was a big difference between men and women's income. Also, at the same time, they sort of came out with very interesting data at Statistics Canada. And so, therefore, I started studying more and more family. I've been, you know, going from one team to another. First, that was the, raise, the rise of um, single motherhood. Uh, so I look at that and see, you know, how long and how it was changing. It used to be due to divorce and uh, to widowhood, and now it was due to divorce. And there were, you know, lone mothers who never were in a union and mother having their kids in cohabitation. And then after that, I study step families because, you know, the earlier they separate, you know, the more chances they had to form another family and look at, you know, what was the difference between, you know, being in a nuclear, you know, intact family as opposed to in a step family. I've been looking at, you know, how couples share, you know, housework, domestic work, time with their children, their money. Uh, then after that, you know, cohabitation become more and more important and uh, divorce and separation kept increasing. So I look for a while at, um, you know, what was the consequences of separation, mostly from the father's point of view. Would they keep contact with their children? And how would it change? And some of those results influence a bit the development of policies, you know, at the federal uh, level, like the Justice Department, when they're talking about custody and child support. And, you know, then after that, I was looking more and more about cohabitation versus marriage. And, like, you know, there was a big court case in Quebec a couple of years ago, the, which is called Lola against Eric, and which was about, you know, these cohabiting women who had kids. And when they separated, she was allowed to get uh, child support for her children, but no alimony for herself. So I've been working on that. So I think all the time I've been, you know, getting more and more involved. And there was always a new change and something different happening. And mostly I think what my work has been doing is uh, sort of, um, you know, providing uh, facts for public debate. Uh, I did a lot of work also about balancing family of work, for, for example, and looking at you know, the impact of parental leave on women's career. You know, is it a good thing, a bad thing? How do you balance both? And, uh, you know, and sort of also influencing sometimes the development of policies. Well, if you want to design good policy, you know, you have to get good pictures. Like, I remember for years I kept pushing for them to ask questions about step families in census, for example, okay? And this year, I think that they should have collected. And they would say, why do you need that? And it's because step families, you know, they're not enough that if you get just a big sample for the whole Canada, you won't be able to look at it, for example, for school. Well, for school, it's important to know, perhaps, for the bus route, because your kids will get on the bus here, but get out the bus there. For the city, for example, if you organize sport and leisure, well, your kids will be out of there once every two weeks because they're visiting the other parents. So for a lot of, you know, planification, planning, offering services, giving policies, you need to have an accurate picture of whom you are, you know, serving with those policies. And if you and, and and if like the families have been changing a lot, if you don't keep you know following them and have good picture of them, you might design policies that will be good just for a tiny portion of your population. And the other part that's changing, you won't know about them. Well, I remember one of the things was about when we studied a lot, uh, you know, following what was the level of contact that fathers maintain with their children after separation. Because, for example, you had after divorce, for example, or even after separation, if the separated parents went to court, 
then you know they would have the, a decision about the custody, and you would know is it chair custody or you know only the woman custody or something like that. But then you didn't know concretely what it was, and with those survey we were able to look at that and see, for example, how shared custody would evolve in turning and becoming a mother's whole custody because shared custody was very, you know, difficult to maintain concretely because. You know, that was perhaps shared uh, in, in terms of, you know, perhaps paying alimony and stuff like that. So there was this part and also showing how, you know, it was changing over time and how also the level of contact that fathers maintain with their children was often very closely re related with the payment of child support. And so, and, you know, and so therefore, all these facts that we arrive at, you know, they, they were used a lot when the federal government, uh, the Justice Department, consult with all the provinces and to revise, you know, the policy in terms of custody and payment. And so they use a lot, a lot of our results. And, you know, sometimes we would find things totally unexpected. Like I remember, uh, because we used to study, compare, for example, married couple and cohabiting couples. And we knew, for example, that in cohabiting couples, they were more likely to share work, both domestic work and employment work. So we thought that at separation, those fathers would be more involved and remain more involved with their children. And we found the total opposite. And that was like, I don't know, the one in married couple seems to be more closely connected with their children. So, you know, th so that was important because then you want to know what will be the impact, for example, on children. You know, is there an impact if their parents were married or not married and what's likely to happen in the future? So that was the kind of uh, result that I thought was uh, very important. And, uh, and I think for me, uh, you know, if it's really used either in public debate or, you know, to help sometimes change the myth that we might have, or if it's you know using policy like that, for me, I think it's probably the most rewarding. For me, it was um, very, I think, you know, rewarding that the kind of studies we were doing could help, uh, you know, build the, the case, and we were. Uh, you know, the expert witness for the Attorney General in Quebec. But also for me, it was a fantastic moment because we work a lot with family lawyers and the Attorney General. And I learned so much about, you know, family law. And I think right now, I think like, I do hope that the work, the kind of work we do, and I think it's doing it, but will help uh, framing family law because I think right now everything is up in the air. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, there was the case in Ontario at some point about a lesbian couple and um, the father of the child was a friend who, you know, had relation, sexual relationship with one of the women. He was involved and the woman was not involved in biologically to give birth to the child, wanted to be recognized as a mother. So there's this kid in Ontario who has three legal parents. That's the only one. But then the question was, you know, what about step parents? What about this? What about that? You know, for example, about step parents, are we ready to give them some rights? Perhaps not the same right as parents, but right now, you know, in law, they are nobody. They have no rights at all. You know, they, if, you know, if they split with the partner, well, they're out of the picture. And, you know, they're, sometimes they can have visiting rights, but that's mo almost what they can have. But they are considered as, quote, strangers, right? And so right now, it's like, you know, who is a, a couple, who is a partner, a spouse, what are they entitled to, who is a children, how many children, how many parents, who are the parents, what are their rights and obligations. And a lot of time, I think, you know, the kind of work we do in showing, you know, how they do manage, how they do live concretely, what's the implication financially in development and so forth, is helping developing those. So I find that very stimulating from my side. We've been looking a lot, for example, at the change in uh, conjugal behavior of adults, the impact on children, right? Well, you know, the boomers who were born in, you know, mid 40s to mid 60s and they are going to start retiring. Now they're the one aging. They're the one who didn't have many kids. They kept separating, forming new unions, cohabiting unions. And we know that when you get old, and you need care, who is there for you? 
your family. But what about if you had no kid or one or two kids, um, if you don't have many siblings, if you've been separated and now you're in a union but with a new partner who's been with you for a couple of years, would this partner will be there when you'll be very sick? as opposed to if you were with a spouse for 25 years. You know, so we're sort of looking and also now we can say, yeah, but on the other side, there is the, you know, the incoming step, fam step relative, you know, the stepbrothers, stepsisters, the stepchildren. And, but on the other side, some of the new study coming out are showing, but you know, by the end of the day, a lot of time people help their own biological parents. So if you don't have time, who will you choose, right? And sometimes also what you've seen, for example, is you know, parents who have children in a second union and they have children from the first union, well, the fact that they have more children like that, a lot of time it's, it's the one from the first union will sort of think that the other one will take care. So by the end of the day, so, but it's all up in the air. On the other side, you know, divorce is not as, um, come on, the, um, no prob, you, you're not as um, condemned if you divorce, it has become more common now. So perhaps it will be more accepted and all that. But on the other side, right now, divorce has happened, sometimes happened so early in the life of your children that perhaps you lost contact with them before really building strong bonds with them. Well, I think now what we really have to push for is for a better division of labor within households. Because I think women have been becoming a lot more present on the labor market. They're more working full-time, being engaged. Their income has been increasing, still lower than those of men, but it's increasing. But right now though, when, you, when the family have children, it's mostly the women who take parental leaves or who put their career on the side or on the slow motion, if I might say, when we take par uh, partial work, for example. And what happened is in the context of conjugal instability that we have, if by the end of the day the couple separates, well, the women are the ones who are going to pay the price of having children in the family because now we, you know, focusing on more and more that the individual should provide for themselves. So after a couple of years, we assume that the women should be back, full employed, and taking care of herself. And so therefore, if she has been, you know, going slowly or getting out of the labor market, she's the one who will be penalized. So I think the important thing right now is really pushing for getting more and more equality within the household. And so therefore, you know, I think there's been a start, you know, by, for example, there are a portion of parental leave that are restricted to men. Well, I don't know, perhaps we'll have to go further on that to make sure that it's not the women, the mothers that will pay by the end of the day.